before we start the video, please don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more company documentary videos. I work really hard to create these documentaries, so please support by subscribing, liking, commenting, and sharing the video. We're working aggressively to grow the channel and we need your help. As always, thank you for being you and doing what you can to support us. Your support means so much and is so appreciated. Thanks again. In the real Game of Thrones of life, we often create a reality of financial comfort and stability. We rest in the certainty of protection by the financial giants of today. What giants do I speak of, you ask? Bank of America, Chase Bank, Goldman Sachs, Wells Fargo, Citibank, etc. Ever more reliant on the promises of security, the US government, and these banks have made us blissfully aware of what's possible. Ever so loudly they scream at the top of their lungs, they are too big to fail. Therefore, we never even consider the fragility of said giants. This is what this story is about. How did First Republic go from $268 billion in assets to being picked apart by financial vultures in the wilderness of capitalism? When the financial ground of America shook, like a building during an earthquake, a giant by the name of First Republic Bank fell to their knees and sentenced to a fate worse than death in the world of capitalism. What do they call it? What is the name that shall not be said in the halls of finance? Collapse. Before we get started, I'm going to warn you this bank was literally patched together by multiple acquisitions. I'm going to try to go slow so I don't lose you guys in the mix as I put this puzzle together for you. Okay, here we go. First Republic was founded in February 1985 by Jim Herbert, previously the founder and CEO of San Francisco Bancorp, which he sold to Atlantic Financial. First Republic began operations on July 1, 1985, as a California chartered industrial loan company. It became a public company via an initial public offering on the NASDAQ in August 1986, selling stock at $10 a share. In 1993, First Republic acquired Silver State Thrift, a savings and loan association in Nevada. In 1996, First Republic sought to shift to a banking charter to expand its offerings. It lobbied the Nevada legislature to pass a law allowing conversion of a Nevada thrift into a Nevada state bank. The law passed in July 1997, shortly after First Republic completed a reverse merger of the larger California Chartered Thrift into the Nevada Chartered Silver State Thrift subsidiary. After the passage of the law, the Nevada Thrift became a state chartered bank called First Republic Savings Bank. In 1998, First Republic acquired Trainer, Worthman & Co. And in December 2001, it acquired Starbuck, Tisdale, and Associates for $13 million in cash and stock. In January 2000, First Republic acquired an 18% interest in Froley, Revy Investment Company Incorporated, and in 2002, it purchased the investment firm for $17 million in cash and stock. In 2004, it acquired the private client asset management division of Bay Isle Financial from Janus Capital Group. In 2006, the bank acquired Bank of Walnut Creek. In September 2007, First Republic was acquired by Merrill Lynch for $1.8 billion in cash and stock. In July 2010, to prevent the collapse of Merrill Lynch, Bank of America acquired Merrill Lynch and thereby acquired First Republic. Bank of America then sold First Republic Bank to a group of private investors, including Colony Capital, General Atlantic, and Chairman James Herbert and former COO Catherine August DeWild for approximately $1 billion. Thomas J. Brock Jr., the head of Colony, had been a board member prior to the Merrill Lynch deal, and General Atlantic had been an early investor in the firm, putting up about $5 million in 1987. Additionally, $800 million was provided by the investment consortium to meet new capital requirements established by U.S. regulators. In December 2010, the bank once again became a public company via an initial public offering, raising $280.5 million. In November 2012, First Republic acquired Luminous Capital, a wealth management firm with $5.5 billion in assets for $125 million. In 2015, First Republic acquired Constellation Wealth Partners for $115 million. In December 2016, the bank acquired Gradifi, a then two-year-old startup that works with companies to help employees pay off student loan debt that included PricewaterhouseCoopers, Natixis, Global Asset Management, and Penguin Random House as customers. In March 2018, the bank invested in Common Bond, a student loan financier. In May 2018, the company leased more office space at Rockefeller Center in New York City to further expand the company. The first crack in the shell of First Republic was felt in 2019, 
when 50 client advisors, who were part of First Republic's luminous acquisition, with $17 billion of assets under management, left the company, causing a significant blow to the company. After such a tremendous blow to the company in 2019, First Republic was able to recover somewhat. They took steps to reassure customers of their stability while aggressively acquiring more customers to fill the hole of losing such a high-valued customer base. While enjoying some stability for a few years, First Republic balance sheets started to falter. In December 31, 2022, First Republic met all capital ratio requirements to be well-capitalized. However, the bank had already borrowed $14 billion from the Federal Home Loan Bank Board, FHLB. In February 28, 2023, First Republic's annual report outlined its challenges, including the fact that most of its loan portfolio was secured by real estate and concentrated in California and the San Francisco Bay Area. The report noted that the bank experienced rapid migration of deposits to higher-yielding products and asset classes due to rising interest rates. By March 6, 2023, First Republic stock fell more than 75% within days, and it never recovered. By March 10, 2023, Silicon Valley Bank was closed by the FDIC, and First Republic began experiencing what it called unprecedented deposit outflows. An outflow is basically a fancy term to say that people ran to the bank to take their money out as soon as possible. A classic run on the bank. On March 12, 2023, the FDIC closed Signature Bank. By March 15th to March 17th, numerous credit rating agencies downgraded First Republic's credit rating, signaling a lack of confidence in the bank. On March 16th, to boost First Republic's liquidity, 11 big banks contributed $30 billion in uninsured deposits. By March 31st, First Republic Bank had borrowed $105.4 billion from the Federal Reserve and Federal Home Loan Bank Board, FHLB funding. Unfortunately, none of this helped reassure people that First Republic was still strong. By April 24th, the bank indicated it was headed toward collapse, as deposits declined almost 41% from December 2022. It announced plans to reduce its workforce by up to 25%, among other cost-cutting steps. On April 28th, First Republic could not access more funding after $121.3 billion in outstanding borrowings from the Federal Reserve and FHLB funds. News outlets reported that the FDIC planned to find buyers for First Republic. On May 1, 2023, J.P. Morgan Chase acquired a substantial majority of First Republic Bank's assets and converted all current First Republic Bank branches into J.P. Morgan. Several common contributing factors led to the failures of all these banks this year. These include the bank's high proportion of uninsured deposits and a focus on overly niche markets, such as venture capitalists in the case of SVB Bank and commercial real estate in the case of Signature Bank. Following the collapse of SVB Bank, investors were more motivated to move their uninsured deposits out of regional banks to protect their funds. The banks were also struggling with asset issues. During the pandemic, historically low interest rates led to banks amassing larger commercial and real estate lending portfolios. As interest rates rose in 2022, lending slowed, and banks were stuck with low-rate loans while paying higher interest rates to customers. First Republic Bank was among a few regional banks that failed in early 2023 due to bank runs driven in part to the high volume of uninsured deposits they carried along with financial struggles caused by the current interest rate issued by the U.S. government to bring down inflation. As you can see, the bank went through a lot of twists and turns to bring us to the reality we see today. I think the main thing I learned from all of this is don't put all your eggs in one basket. To make sure my funds are safe, I opened up multiple bank accounts and deposited enough money under the minimum FDIC insurance limit of $250,000. So no matter what bank collapses, the government will reimburse me up to the $250,000 per bank account that I have in different banks. I suggest if your finances are very complex and exceed this amount, go see a financial advisor that can provide more guidance on how to handle distributing your money according to your own personal circumstances. But what do you guys think about all the acquisitions? Do all these failed banks make you nervous about the banking system now? Did any of you bank with any of the recently failed banks? If you did, how did it go for you when trying to get your money out? Please leave a comment, I'd greatly appreciate it. Please don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more company documentary videos. I work really hard to create these documentaries, so please support by subscribing, liking, 
commenting, and sharing the video. We're working aggressively to grow the channel and we need your help. As always, thank you so much for being you and doing what you can to support us. Your support means so much and is so appreciated. Thanks again. See you in the next video.